guys welcome back to Kosasno no podcast my name is Kosu. welcome back to a brand new video now if you doubted kai harvest this video is for you i think we all have to unite and say we are sorry we absolutely got this wrong in this video we're going to be diving into the rise and re-rise of kai harvest where he has become such an important player for arsenal and how he has turned his career around within a very short period of time amidst a lot of criticism and amidst a lot of doubters as well now i don't think Mikel Arteta has already justified the signing of kai harvest but of course if we win the champions league or the premier league or one of those or even both then we will have been really massively wrong about this guy he, at the po point of recording he's one of arsenal's top scorers really affecting games pressing high pressing hard he's a hard worker and he's one of the players that are really giving us a lot of optimism going into the last 10 games of the campaign so if you're wrong about him in the first place can you type i'm sorry in the chat just that i'm sorry in the chat and of course if you believed in him right from the start i want to see how many people actually did believe in kai Havis, you know uh right from last summer hit the like button let's get this video to 300 likes and let's dive into this simple apology now um in the summer of course arsenal did invest around 75 million euros that is about 65 million pounds on kai Havis from chelsea and that was an overpay according to many pundits and myself as well now according to um some of my favorite pundits like simon jordan that was a mistake from Mikel Arteta and Arsenal should never have paid 65 million pounds. When Mikel Arteta was asked about this signing, he said he has special features that he sees in him and the things that he's able to do that you cannot find elsewhere in football. And most of us actually didn't see that. We thought he had come in to be a replacement for Granit Xhaka, which initially uh, was the reason why we signed him. And he has massively failed in that position. He has f massively failed as a midfielder so far. And Mikel Arteta, what he has done is to continue believing in him as a player. He has shifted him from position to position and eventually making him a number nine, a center forward. And that is the position where he's really, really clicking. And recently we have seen him play in the same position for Germany and scoring again, moreover, against France. So that means that Mikel Arteta really knew the ability of Carvers that even if he didn't work out as a midfielder, even if he didn't work out as a number eight or as a Granit Xhaka replacement, he was always going to work out in some position, in some shape or form. So that is credit to Mikel Arteta. And that takes me to the first reason why Kai Havers has turned his career at runner Arsenal, the trust from the manager. Now, when you sign a player, I mean, it doesn't really matter. We have seen Mikel Arteta turn players around. Martin Odegaard is one of them. Benjamin White is the other. You know, there are times when the price tag is too much and there are times when the signing is coming in at a wrong time. For example, Martin Odegaard is such a very great player. He's a, he's a very great talent. But we compared him to James Madison at the time and we all decided that James Madison was the better player to sign. However, Mikel Arteta thought otherwise and he has proven us wrong. Odegaard has become one of the most important captains in the Premier League but also the most important midfielder at Arsenal right about now. So with Kai Havers, it was always going to be Mikel Arteta backing himself, but also backing the signing and backing the, the decision he made to sign Kai. And he's actually done that. So look at this season. Kai Havers obviously started has started very, very many games as compared to the likes of Fabio Vieira, who could play in that position as, the, as compared to the likes of Thomas Partey, who have been out in general, as, as compared to a couple of other players who you thought, especially Leandro Trossard, who you thought would actually give you much more quality than Kai Havers, especially the fact that he came in and he failed to, you know, to hit the ground running. But Mikel decided that this is my signing, this is my player, and I know what I want to do with him, and I'm going to give him the game time that he actually deserves. So signing him in the first place was... um. Uh, was a great statement of trust in the player because he wasn't really doing very well at Chelsea and he was not part of the Chelsea side that was actually doing very well. He was just part of a Chelsea side that has, had finished 10th in the Premier League and were continuing to struggle. And Chelsea at the moment are continuing to struggle. And that shows you that the problem was never Kai Havers. The problem was Chelsea as a side. So for, for, for Mikel to go out there and trust a player from Chelsea, like, look at them, look at Raheem Sterling, look at Mason Mount, look at all these players that 
are, are associated with Chelsea. They're massively, massively, um, you know, on a downward curve at the moment. So the, the, the trust to invest 75 million pounds from Mikel Arteta and Edu, I think that would have, you know, sent a statement to Kai Havertz that this team wants you. But most importantly, the two most important player, uh, you know, people at this team, Mikel Arteta and Edu, really trust in your abilities. The other thing that I think Mikel Arteta has actually done is withstanding all the criticism and withstanding um, all the call, calls for him to drop Kai Havertz at a time when Arsenal wasn't really doing well. We've got to agree that pre-Dubai, pre-2024, this Arsenal side has had a couple of mixed reactions. This year, we've not lost a Premier League game. And that means that between August... Uh, 2023 and January 2023, Arsenal have lost four Premier League games this campaign. And we've not lost a single Premier League campaign in 2024. We've played eight games there. So that means that Mikel Arteta was always going to be under pressure. Why is the team not doing well? Why don't you do some changes? Why don't you make some changes? Why don't you drop the likes of Kai? They were actually not doing well at the moment. He was not scoring goals. He had just scored, I think, one or two goals against Brentford and um, uh, and, 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 and Bournemouth, the penalty. So th there was a lot of pressure f to Mikel Arteta. At some point in time, he did drop him, but he brought him back into the side very, very quickly. And I love that from Mikel Arteta. He's a resilient guy, and he is a resilient manager as well. But the most important thing that Mikel Arteta has done with Kai is finding the right position as well. Now, like I said, according to the likes of David Einstein on The Athletic, when we signed him, Mikel Arteta was sure he's going to be a replacement for Granit Xhaka. And you look at what he's actually doing at the moment, you think he will be, he will get there, in my opinion. Uh, what Xhaka was doing last season was... Uh, again, arriving in the penalty area a little bit late as compared to all these other players. And his really high and advanced position on the pitch was something that we had not anticipated coming into last campaign. Now, when you look at Kai Havertz and what he's doing now and you compare to what Xhaka was doing then... It is actually not very, very different. The difference is that right now we don't have a striker who is actually starting ahead of Kai. And therefore, Kai is our most advanced, you know, attacker at the moment. I, I hope it makes sense. So finding that right position and trying the um, trial and error method, trying him in a couple of you know, uh, positions, trying him alongside Gigino, trying him alongside Declan Rice, and then trying him um, in that number nine, you know, position has allowed Kai Havers to find himself and has allowed Kai Havers to find a position that works best for, the, for, for, best for him in this Arsenal side. And I think that is the position. That number nine position, that center forward position is going to do a lot of good to Kai Havers' confidence and it's already done a lot of him, a, a lot of good to his game as well. But we cannot talk about Mikel Arteta and um, Kai Havers and we forget the player himself. I think Kai has actually done a lot in terms of improving his game and also improving whatever was actually going wrong um, you know, as part of his game. Now, we have criticized him a lot and there was going to be a lot of talk, is he the right guy? Is he the right player? The one thing he has done, and he has talked about this in an interview, training hard and that is part of his determination and hard work. I think as a player, we can all say it. Now, he doesn't really run uh, like Martinelli and Saka and maybe Odegaard. But when you look at what other players are doing on this Arsenal side, on the pitch and off the pitch, and what Kai is doing, it is actually similar. I don't think he's one player you're going to say he's Messi Rozel, right? He doesn't really care, or he's lazy, or he's giving you these lazy, lazy vibes. He's pushing a lot. He's pressing a lot. He's a pressing monster, but he's also working hard off the pitch. Now, in one of the interviews, when he was given um, a chance to speak about uh, his turnaround, he said, I'm really happy that the hard work is actually paying off because these moments, we have worked a lot for them off the pitch. In training, um, uh, in, in, in the gym, we work a lot for these moments. And I'm really happy that they're paying around and I'm uh, uh, coming around and they're paying off. So I think that's the first thing that we've got to appreciate uh, with this guy, that whatever has happened, he has kept on working hard. He has kept the determination. And I think... Again, it is something that many players do not have. It's, some, it's, it's something that, as a player, when you're on a decline in your career, it is a tool 
that you will need in your arsenal if you're going to revive your career and um, change the trajectory in which your career is actually going. Now, I think um, we have seen him try every single time to uh, make things happen, and things have actually not gone his way all the time. You remember the Manchester United chance that he missed that was a sitter and then he gives away the ball and Manchester United scored through Marcus Rashford again um there was a, 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 an easy goal an easy chance for him to score against PSV in the first leg and again I think there was another chance that he failed to convert and that was against um that was against Manchester City in the committee show but the important highlight among all those chances among all those misses was he is getting himself in right positions. He's getting himself in good positions. And he is trying as a player. You could see him in the penalty area. You could see him fight for the ball. And now that his career is on the, is on the upward trajectory, you can see him successfully converting the chances. You can see him successfully fighting and winning the ball. But I can also see him successfully making those off-ball runs and... Uh, P players are able to find him. An example is the Liverpool goal when we drew at the Anfield 1-1. That was a very good move. Great movement. He keeps himself aside, on side. He doesn't really score, but he does well for the goal. And, uh, of course, Saka is there, and he can finish, and Arsenal get the lead. So the first thing that, um, for me, I, I would appreciate about Kai Havis is holding his head high above the water, above all these seas um, of, you're not good enough. You should never play for Arsenal. Why are you even here? He, he's, he's a flop. Chelsea fans giving us the vibes. He's never going to be um, a £65 million signing. He's never going to be a £75 million signing. To the extent right now where Chelsea fans are like, why is he scoring goals? Why is he putting Arsenal in the title race? And I think, you've, again, you've got to give Mikel Arteta the credit of um, sporting such talents. Gigino, Odegaard, Kai Havers, many of these signings have been flops where they've been, and many of them have actually been great signings for some period of time, and then they've declined. But Kai Havers has been one that Chelsea fans wanted out, one that any team never wanted, and Mikel Atta and Edu decided they would sign him. So the, the last thing I think we, we, we've got to appreciate about him is the hunger to prove the doubters wrong. And this is through the hard work, especially when Arsenal are out of uh, you know, position. He is fantastic. And one of the reasons why Mikel Arteta believed in Kai Havers is, although he was not scoring and assisting yet, he was doing some other things right, especially fighting and pressing pressing high especially making sure that he was hungry to win the ball back especially making sure that whatever was going on he was keeping himself active on the pitch and was trying to help the team so that hunger and that determination takes us to the next point which was never in doubt the talent and the ability for kai harvis was never in doubt and under this i've written and said that his off-ball movement has never changed. Now, many people actually looked at Kai Havers, what he's missing, rather than what he's actually achieving. And like any other player, players will miss chances. Players will, um, you know, players will at, at, at some point in time fail to deliver. For example, Martin Odegaard against Aston Villa, although we lost that game 1-0, Martin Odegaard had three very good chances to bury that game, and Arsenal could have won that game 3-2, 3-1, or even four goals to one. It wasn't about Kai, it was actually about Martin Odegaard. As that game was ending, Kai Havers actually tried to equalize, but there was an element of the side and an element of um, a handball, and therefore Arsenal failed to equalize in that game. But all in all, it was never in doubt. The talent was there, and we kept on saying that at Balivakuzen, he was a good player. At Balivakuzen, he was a great, great guy. And, and what we wanted was to see that converted in an Arsenal jersey. This is what we wanted to see. 1v1 against the goalkeeper. In this, in this scenario, he has just beaten um, a Burnley defender. He's just taken off a, defend, a, a, a Burnley defender off the, off, off the game. And he's 1v1 with the goalkeeper and he finishes very, very coolly. So his ability is something important because it allows you to believe in the player. And I think with Mikel Arteta and Edu, what they looked at was his ability and what he has achieved and what he can do. 
He has scored a very important goal for Chelsea in the UEFA Champions League final against Manchester City. That is something that is really underrated, but something that I think should actually be really, really rated, in my opinion. So, right from his, um, you know, uh, days, he's been a clinical player. His understanding of the game is top-notch. You can see his movement. You can see that he's a player that doesn't really collide with other players. And you look at the, the, the important goals that he has scored um, for Arsenal. The two goals against Burnley. Where is he? Look at his positioning. Saka is um, going to ping that ball at the uh, far post, at the back post, and he is there. And in the, in the second scenario, recently, when we beat Bournemouth two goals to one, I think it's Ben White who crosses the ball very nicely, very neatly, and he heads very nicely. But look at his positioning. Look at his positioning. He gives himself time in the penalty area and he can sense and he can predict where the ball is going to fall and he will be there. That is the brilliance of Kai Havers. But of course, the team as well, and as he has said himself, the team has given him a lot of energy and a lot of ability to go on and achieve whatever he has achieved so far in this Arsenal jersey. So the teammates, um, right from giving him that penalty against Bournemouth, that is something that we saw. And we all said, there is something here. This team really want him to win, and these players really understand the tough time he's actually going through. Now, the penalty initially had gone to uh, to Saka, um, obviously, but Martin Odegaard did convince Saka to give the penalty to Kai Havers, which he converted coolly, and that led to a boost in his levels. After that, he scored against Lens, he scored against um, you know West Ham, he scored a, against a couple of teams, and where we are right now is Kai Havers, the goal scorer. And maybe the question now is, do we really need a number nine? I don't know. So let me know what you think about Kai Havers' turnaround and whether you think it is something that Mikel Arteta should try against again in one of our next summer signings. And I mean Marcus Rashford. Could Mikel Arteta turn the Rashford career around? Let me know in the comment box below.